the act not done well. Uh, I don't think the act has made any mistakes. It, the act can't make, it's, it's not an animate object. It can't do something right, it can't do something wrong. What, what we could ask is how have, how have the state agencies responded to wolf recovery? More importantly, how has the federal government responded to wolf recovery? In some respects, the federal government, as I just said, has done an outstanding job with the boots on the ground work. The, the team in the Northern Rocky Mountains, for example, led largely by Ed, did a masterful job managing two very different competing interests. On the one hand, you have to resolve conflicts, uh, and, and, and quite often that means you've got to kill wolves. On the other hand, you've got to grow the population, which means wolves have to live. And, and so you've got these, this competition between these two needs. Beautiful work in the field. You're hard pressed to find a harder working biologist than Mike Jimenez. Has worked or worked for Ed for a long time and still in the field doing great work. On the other hand, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service did a lousy job managing the administration of the Endangered Species Act. Did a lousy job settling on an answer to recovery that made sense. In the Northern Rocky Mountains, we struggle in the Southwest. For heaven's sakes, you know, you don't even have a recovery plan for the Mexican wolf that makes any sense. So the act isn't right or wrong, it hasn't done something well, it hasn't done something poorly. I say the United States Fish and Wildlife Service has done some good things, but they've made some fundamental mistakes, especially because when you get right down to it, recovery is tough, and they tried to cut corners, and you can't do that. Ed. Well, I think the question is what has the Native Species Act not done so well at? Um, and I, I think part of that is you just need patience with this stuff. It, it, it takes a long time to define what the Endangered Species Act is really supposed to do and not supposed to do. And it takes a whole team of lawyers and a lot of time and a lot of politicians to kind of figure that out. I think one of the things the Act has not done so well, and just use the Northern Rockies as, as an example, it has not anticipated success that well. Uh, we have a lot of wolves in a lot of places in the Northern Rocky Mountains for a long time. It was very difficult to change the mindset of the public, uh, of managers, that when you have very, very few wolves, you have to do a lot to keep every wolf in the population because it's very important. When you have more and more wolves, you have more and more problems. And each wolf individually becomes less valuable. So the service really wrestled with what happens when you're successful. We're so rarely successful because these problems are so difficult, so complex, and some of them may be irresolvable, that we haven't done a good job of anticipating when we no longer need Endangered Species Act funding and efforts to go to a species that no longer deserves it. And wolves in the Northern Rocky Mountains are fine. My personal opinion is that wolf recovery in the Midwest and in the Northern Rocky Mountains would have happened absent the Endangered Species Act, it would have taken just a lot longer. There would not be wolves in Yellowstone today if it wasn't for the Act. But I, so I don't think the Act did a really good job of thinking about what happens when we've recovered the population, when we're successful. How do we transfer that into a more successful conservation model, which is the state management model? Thank you. And Larry. Thanks, Nancy. You know, this really does come down, I think, to the essence of the discussion today. You've got three professionals up here that have spent their life in conservation. This really isn't a debate, in my mind, uh, between individuals. This is really a debate that focuses on the difference between focusing your efforts on a singular conservation effort versus focusing 
on the opportunities to create entire systems of conservation. And there's a difference there. One of the things that the act has precipitated is a tendency to focus on singular conservation effort. On the other hand, systems of conservation can give us the opportunity to achieve so much more. Systems of conservation require supporting funding, uh, a support of science, a support of authority structure and regulatory structure, a support of public and political support. The Endangered Species Act in focusing us down on a species, I think the biggest thing that it leaves undone is creating that holistic system of conservation support. You think about what happened with the Pittman Robertson Act, you think about the systems that are in place that created systems of science in all of our universities across the nation that created a system of management and authority not only in the 50 states, but under the federal system as well. Uh, then you have a system that creates and supports the folks that have to do that work on the ground day to day. And the Endangered Species Act fell short in providing that broad systematic overview. It does give us regulatory power that's essential to the continuation of these species. It, it does not give us the complete systems that it will take for us to have conservation in the future. And as so goes conservation, believe me, so goes the great wolf. If conservation systems fail, no matter how powerful your regulatory structure, you will lose the great wolf.